Hello and welcome to the first series and indeed the first videos on the Bullbark Tree channel. Before we get on with the content, I have some groundkeeping to do. This series is about homology. What is homology? Homology is a technique developed in the 20th century to study topological spaces. Since then, it's been modified and generalized in a million different ways, and these modifications and generalizations hold a significance in modern mathematics that is hard to overstate. If you try to study algebraic topology, however, one of the main hurdles is actually making sense of homology. It's this big, complicated construction, and if it's not taught right, it can seem very unnatural and bizarre. My ambition for this video series is to show how if you start from some simple principles and think about topology in the right way, homology is actually the end product of a series of very natural choices. Now, I don't actually believe that any given audience member could invent homology. After all, humans studied mathematics for thousands of years before homology. But I hope that you'll come away from these videos with the impression that topology is not quite as mysterious as it may seem. Now, unfortunately, algebraic topology has a lot of prerequisites. But in this series I'll be talking mostly about ideas, and I'll push back the prerequisites as far as possible. I will eventually have to assume that you know some group theory, and so on, but I'll wait as long as possible, and it's my hope that if you don't know any group theory, all the stuff up to that point will be clear. After all, the algebra in algebraic topology is largely a bookkeeping device, and the ideas that the groups formalize exist independently of the groups themselves. So, every video will have very clearly stated prerequisites at the start. The first video, which provides a philosophical background and motivation, doesn't have any specific prerequisites besides knowing what a function is and even that should hopefully become clear during the course of the video if you're unfamiliar. So anyway, thanks for watching, like and subscribe, and let's get to the content. Oh, and just as a heads up, I will be using the words function, map, and mapping interchangeably throughout. Topology is the study of continuity. Continuity is a property that functions can have, and it roughly means that the function doesn't tear its domain. For instance, a function from the real line to itself is continuous when its graph can be drawn without lifting your pen from the page. If we think of the graph of this function as a sort of distorted copy of the line, then the function is continuous when its graph is still a line. It may be bent or curved, but it's not broken. Another way to think about continuity is that a function is continuous when it sends nearby points to nearby points. If we pick a point in the domain of a continuous function and wiggle it a little, then the corresponding point in the codomain can move, and maybe it can move a lot, but it can't suddenly jump. Continuity is an important and pervasive concept in mathematics, and lots of geometric and even not-so-geometric things have some notion of continuity. For instance, we can talk about whether or not a function from a line to a plane is continuous, or whether a function from a plane to a sphere is continuous, or really any function between any two things that are in some sense spatial. In fact, having a notion of continuity is arguably what it means, or at least part of what it means, for something to be a space. In topology, the main objects of study are called topological spaces. Topological spaces consist of a set of points, together with some notion of continuity. A notion of continuity, in this case, comes in the form of a mathematical gadget called a topology that determines which functions mapping out of or into the space are continuous, so long as the other set involved also has a topology. The technical definition of what a topology is is a bit 
unintuitive. I don't think it would be a helpful digression to go through the nitty gritty details of what a topology is and how the continuity gadget works, so I won't. Although I may make a video about it in the future. For now, just think of it as a machine that says yes or no whenever it's given a function and another topology to compare notes with. The goal of topology is to understand topological spaces. Since topological spaces show up all over mathematics, topology has grown to be one of the central topics in modern mathematics. So what does it mean to understand topological spaces? Well, ideally, we'd like to write down a list, a so-called classification of all the topological spaces that can possibly exist. Then, whenever a topological space pops up, as so often happens in mathematics, you can ask, which topological space on our list is this? A good classification would come with a way to figure that out, and if we had such a classification, we would have to know an enormous amount about topological spaces. Unfortunately, classifying topological spaces is extremely impossible. The universe of topological spaces is so expansive that not only would it be astronomically impractical, you can even prove that it's impossible. We can somewhat reduce the number of topological spaces we have to study by considering them up to homeomorphism. What does that mean? Well, some continuous maps don't really do anything. Consider the following mapping from this torus to this coffee mug. There's another continuous map which goes the other way that undoes our map, in the sense that if you apply one and then the other in either order, you always end up back where you started. So this map can't really change anything about the torus, at least nothing that you can't undo by applying another continuous map. This means that the torus and coffee mug have to have essentially the same shape in a very loose sense. After all, you can turn one into the other by a reversible continuous transformation. In topology, we call reversible continuous maps homeomorphisms, and if two spaces have a homeomorphism between them, we say that they are homeomorphic. Homeomorphic spaces are thought of as being basically the same, at least as far as topology is concerned. Studying topological spaces up to homeomorphism, then, means studying topological spaces while disregarding any difference between homeomorphic spaces. This is part of a wider theme in mathematics, when you want to compare objects or tell them apart by detecting some fundamental and intrinsic difference, transformations that can be undone are thought of as doing essentially nothing, and objects that can be turned into one another by doing essentially nothing are thought of as being essentially the same. Unfortunately, it's still extremely impossible to classify topological spaces even up to homeomorphism. There's just too many possibilities. So how do we go about understanding topological spaces up to homeomorphism? Well, there's really only one thing we have, continuous functions. So there's really only one thing we can do, study continuous functions. Luckily, continuous functions can actually tell us quite a lot about the geometry of a topological space. For instance, suppose we have some mysterious topological space that we don't know anything about. Now, suppose we have a continuous mapping of a line segment into our mystery space. We've drawn a line in the dark. This line could be bent or curved, but it's still a line. It might intersect itself, or it might get stuck and not be able to go anywhere at all. Each of these situations, however, tells us something about the mystery space. And we always know that 
every point that this map passes through lies on some line that connects them all. You can always get from one to the other continuously. You might imagine that if we knew a lot about the continuous functions of this form, we would know a lot about the mystery space. And you'd be right. This is the fundamental idea behind homology and algebraic topology as a whole. Study complicated spaces by studying the way that simple spaces map into them. So here's our game plan. First, we'll identify a handful of particularly simple, manageable topological spaces, and then we'll develop a systematic method of studying the way that they map into other spaces and, crucially, the way that those maps relate to each other. If we make some clever choices along the way, our method will reveal the underlying shape of whatever space we're mapping into, and we will have invented homology. Shout out to my patron.